Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, on you, Husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Summer is almost here, and children's thoughts will be turning to dreams of vacation, how and where to spend it. But while their thoughts are on this subject, it is a good time for parents to consider doing something about the elementary school situation in their town. Now, maybe your town has already set the wheels into motion on this problem, but in many communities across the nation, the unhappy fact is that inadequate elementary schools exist and need immediate attention. Now is a good time to check up and see if your town schools are going to find themselves short of elementary teachers, classrooms, textbooks, and other equipment. If they are, find out what you can do to help. Our schools are our front-line defense for democracy. By providing the best schools it can afford, your town keeps its level high and contributes to its own prosperity as well as the prosperity and security of the nation. Don't forget, better schools build a stronger America. This message is brought to you as a public service. There was a wild celebration when the first boat came into Dawson from St. Michael late in June. It meant the first fresh supplies and mail from home in months. Sergeant Preston was on duty at the waterfront, but the crowd was good-natured and he had no trouble keeping order. Most of the passengers had come ashore, and the sergeant was about to return to headquarters when he saw the six-year-old boy sitting on a valise. Hello there, young man. Welcome to the Yukon. Hello. You're a policeman, aren't you? Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted, at your service. Do you see my father? Well, who is your father? His name is Harper. I'm Chad Harper. My father owns a mine on Terrible Creek. Harry Harper, why, of course. I know him well, Dad. He was in town last month. Isn't he in town now? I don't think so. I guess he doesn't like me. Well, why do you say a thing like that? He was supposed to meet me. But, Ted, I don't believe he knew you were coming. He didn't say anything about it to me. Sergeant Preston! At that moment, Captain Campbell of the Yukon Bell hailed the sergeant. Well, I'm certainly glad to see you, Sergeant. With Harry Hopper. Probably at Caribou Creek. A fine thing. When Captain Holmes of the city of Portland turned the boy over to me, he said that Harry was expecting him and would be waiting at the dock. We had no idea he was coming. Months ago, he told me the boy was living with his grandmother in Seattle. Grandma died. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. The boy had no other relatives in town, and Harry's lawyers decided the best thing to do was to ship him up here. They wrote Harry. Captain Holmes agreed to take care of him. Well, the letter's probably in one of those mailbags your men are unloading. Well, probably. What's to be done, sir? Do I have to go back to Seattle? No, Tad. You stay at headquarters for a few days, and then I'll find you a pony, and you and I can ride up to Caribou Creek. But... Maybe Father doesn't want me to go there. Of course he does. Thank goodness for the Northwest Mountain. You've taken a load off my mind, Sergeant. We'll see the tide gets home, Captain. And Sergeant Preston did. It was only a week later that he and Tad and King reached the Harper Mining Company's property on Caribou Creek. Harry's home was on the ridge high above the mine. A two-story building, so much larger than the usual Yukon cabin, most people called it Harper's Castle. Tad was impressed by its size. Does father live here all alone? No, Tad. Your Uncle Phil and his wife live with him. Well, I don't know them. And there's Joe Taggish, too. Who's he? He's an Indian. Good friend of mine. He cuts the wood and keeps up the fires. Is he a real Indian? A real Indian. He'll teach you all about the woods. Oh, 
want to scalp me? <laughs> no, Tad. Won't you want to scalp me? No, Joe's a good Indian. Oh, Blackie. Oh, 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 there we are. Steady. Sergeant. What, son? Will you go in first to find out if they want me? Now, that's nonsense. Your father will be very happy to see you. Come on, we'll go in together. Come on, King. <laughs> Nobody's home. Well, it's after seven. Your father might still be at the mine, but I doubt it. Your aunt will be here at any rate. Yes? Mrs. Harper? Mrs. Phil Harper, yes. I'm Sergeant Preston, and this is your nephew. My what? Your nephew, Tad. Oh, but this is impossible. Why, he should be in Seattle with his grandmother. Grandma died. There was no one to take care of him in Seattle. Harry's lawyers sent him up here. They wrote Harry, but uh, the letters in this package of mail, at least there's an envelope with their name on it. It must be the one. Well, what are we going to do with him? You see, Sergeant? Well, I'd suggest that you ask us in, Mrs. Harper, and that you tell Harry his son's arrived. Why, uh, why, yes. Do come in. Thank you. But not the dog. I won't come in unless King can come in. Don't you sass me, young man. I can't have a dog in this house, Sergeant. This isn't a miner's cabin. The rugs, the hangings, the furniture came all the way from New York. King doesn't mind waiting outside, Dad. Stay here, boy. <laughs> Off the porch, if you please. Watch the horses, King. Oh, 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 that's better. This way. Come along, Dad. Who is it, Curtis? Sergeant Preston. And of all people, Tad. The boy? This boy is Tad. You heard me, didn't you? Old Mrs. Harper's dead. You're not my father. No, I, I'm your Uncle Phil. Well, don't stand there gawking. Go and tell Harry. And tell Joe to make up the bed in the small bedroom at the back of the house. Hurry! Very well. I uh, don't suppose you'll be staying overnight, Sergeant. You policemen are always so busy. Don't sit on that chair, Tad. Take the straight one. Yes, ma'am. You can see why I don't allow animals in here, Sergeant. It's a beautiful room. Quite a change, isn't it? Uh, change? From what? The Eldorado. Why, that's... That saloon? I never... Well, I may have set foot in the place, but if you're insinuating I'm not insinuating that... anything, and I'll admit that your engagement as a singer didn't last very long. But that was where you met Phil, wasn't it? Nothing of the sort. We met in San Francisco. I stand corrected. If you don't allow animals in here, where am I going to keep my puppy? What puppy? The one the sergeant's going to bring me. He's not going to bring you any puppy. I absolutely forbid it. Then I won't stay here. Harry Harper entered the room at that moment. The boy's words stopped him for a second on the threshold. And then he hurried to him and took him in his arms. Ted, my son, what are you saying? What do you mean you won't stay here? This is your home. Are you my father? Yes, don't you remember me? You've got a beard. <laughs> so I have. Don't you like beards? I wish I could see your face. <laughs> All right, I'll shave the beard off tonight. Whatever you say goes, Tad. We want you to be happy here. Why didn't you meet me in Dawson? Well, I've explained that to you, Tad. Well, perhaps you'll explain it to me, Sergeant. This is all something of a shock. Phil tells me that my mother is dead. And to have the boy suddenly appear like this... Your lawyers didn't allow for the time it takes to deliver mail up here. It's been piling up in St. Michael's for the last three months, waiting for the river steamers to start running. Here, I think you'll find the letter on top from your lawyers. It should explain everything. Well, let me see it. Yes. Yes. But they should have known better... They should have at least waited to hear from me before sending the boy all that distance. And alone, Sergeant. Well, the stupidity of it. I'd have gone down there, brought the boy up myself, or perhaps found a school for him in the States. You don't want me here. Oh, Tad, of course I do. I'm just angry because of what might have happened to you. Of course I want you. And may I have a puppy? What? A puppy? Well, that's what we were arguing about when you came in. The sergeant promised me one. I'm leaving at once if you allow that child to bring a dog into this house. Well, certainly a house like this isn't exactly the place for a dog. But uh, there are plenty of dogs down at the mine kennels, and you may play with them whenever you want to. It isn't like having your own dog. No, that's true. Uh, Judith, can't he... Not unless you prefer Indian cooking. Well, 
talk about it some other time, Tad. Sergeant, thanks for taking care of the boy. You'll stay for supper in the night? No, not for the night. As your sister-in-law has reminded me, a policeman's work is never done. I'd better be on my way. And although the sergeant stayed for supper, he left shortly afterward. And he didn't return to Caribou Creek until the middle of the next winter. It was a routine patrol that took him in that direction. The third night out from Dawson, he made camp on the trail. Toward morning, King struggled from the snowbank in which he had burrowed close to his master. The scent of danger was in the air. A moment later, he saw the wolf pack streaking across the ridge. Their howls woke the rest of the team, and Sergeant Preston woke with them. Wolves, King? Yes, hungry, too. There were over 20 wolves in the pack. Their eyes flashed green, and their fangs white as they raced on toward the Sergeant and King. Closer and closer. At last, the Sergeant opened fire. The pack swerved aside, but only to avoid the man and get the dogs behind him. Then King dashed forward to intercept him. He threw himself at the leader and knocked him off his feet. The leader's fang slashed his shoulder open. The pain was sharp, searing, but King never wavered in his attack. The sergeant fired point blank into the pack. It was he who ended the fight. The body of the wolf went limp. When King staggered to his feet, the remaining members of the pack were racing toward the ridge. The sergeant knelt beside King. King... King, old boy, you put up a wonderful fight, but you've been hurt badly. Let me see. Shoulder, throat. Close one, King. We'll have to take care of you right away. And you'll have to take it easy for a few days, boy, and ride the sled. The sergeant hoped to make Caribou Creek the following night, but a sudden blizzard slowed the team down, and at nightfall they were still in the woods east of the ridge that ran north and south the length of the creek. Suddenly, the sergeant saw a light glimmering through the trees, and he stopped the team. Oh, 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 oh. King, that light must be coming from the cabin where Joe Tigers used to live before he went to work for Harper. I wonder who could be using it now. I'd better investigate. All right. Oh, oh, oh. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. It's a home run! Hooray for our team! Golly, kids, baseball games are a lot of fun, aren't they? He smashed that ball right out of the ballpark. And that puts our team ahead. Gee, I wouldn't miss seeing this game for anything. Say, are you fellas and girls getting in on the fun? Well, come on. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Get your free baseball tickets right inside packages of Quaker Puff Wheat, Quaker Puff Rice, or Muffet Shredded Wheat. And two free tickets are inside Quaker Paco 10. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. If you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see major or minor league baseball games free. So rush to the grocery store. Get free baseball ticket packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. If your store doesn't have the special packages yet, send a box top from the regular package to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Go to the ball game free. See home run hitters in person. Now to continue. As Sergeant Preston stopped his team in front of the cabin, the door opened and a man came out. It was the Indian Joe Taggart. Oh, no, no, no. Sergeant! Joe! Hey, what matter with King? Had to fight off a wolf back last night. He's been hurt. You stay here tonight. But you can put us up, but how's it happen you're living here? Me help you unharness team. Feed him. And Joe tell you everything that happened. All right. After the team had been fed, the sergeant carried King into the cabin. A tiny white puppy raced across the room and nipped playfully at Joe's mucklock. <laughs> you be quiet, Waggy. Good looking pup, Joe. Uh, here, blanket. Me put near stove. King sleeps here. Fine. There you are, King. <laughs> Better Joe pick you up, Waggy. You be quiet. Where'd you get him? Me buy him in Beaver City for Tad. Oh? What does that say to that? Uh, I not know. Tad not happy, Sergeant. Boss work all time. 
Aunt, uncle, not like boy. Joe, his only friend. Me by puppy. Keep in woodshed where boy can play with him. Without his aunt knowing about it. Ah, but Joe have to take puppy with him when boss fire Joe. Harry fire Joe? Well, that doesn't sound like him at all. Miss Judas say Joe steal. Huh? Find bracelet in room. Yesterday, boss tell Joe, go away. But you didn't steal, did you? No. Miss Judas, bad woman. Afraid Joe know too much. Know too much? What about? What's been happening at the castle? Let me tell you. Two days ago, boss make trip to Beaver City. While him gone, strange man come to Crick. Him friend of Mr. Phil stay at castle. Yes? After supper, Miss Judas send boy to bed. Joe, he work out in kitchen. Here, Miss Judas, Mr. Phil talk to stranger. Me not understand all them say, but me tell you words. Joe try to remember all. Judas? Did Phil ever mention that the police would still like to find him in connection with a bank robbery? They're looking for a man named Spike Gordon. They have no idea. That's that Spike Gordon and Phil Harper are one and the same. There's no way for them to find out. <laughs> Unless one of your friends would have tipped them off. You wouldn't dare. How did you ever find me? How did you Let's ever... Let's be side the point. What is this? Blackmail? Oh, that's an ugly word. Well, if you think Phil has any money, you're crazy. He's nothing but a clerk as far as the mine is concerned. Harry puts up with him and pays him a salary because he's his brother. And because I'm a good housekeeper and take care of his brat. Phil works in the mine office, doesn't he? What of it? You must know the combination of the Oh, no, 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 no. Nothing like that. Even if I did get away with it. If it'd bring the police here, there'd be questions. Those mounties never give up. <laughs> Don't expect Phil to show any nerve, Matt. <sighs> be so simple. My plan is simple, too, and he won't even listen to it. Forget it. What's the plan? If anything should happen to Harry and the boy, the whole mine would belong to Phil. He's talking about murder. My wife wants me to kill my brother and my nephew. It could be made to seem an accident. What sort of an accident? Fire, for instance. If a fire should break out, the men from the mine could never get here in time to put it out. Yeah, there'd have to be something more than fire. Well, you don't need a blueprint. A single blow. Enough to not carry out. Another for the boy. Sounds good. You hear that, Phil? You would help, wouldn't you, Mac? For a third interest in the mine. Huh. Well, that's only fair. A third for each of us. Oh, Phil, will you listen to reason? I don't call it reason. You could leave it to Mac and... I promise you that no one will ever find out. You're forgetting Joe. How do you expect to kill him, too? Well, it won't be necessary. I'll get rid of him before we try it. I'll get rid of him tomorrow. Oh, think what we could do with all that gold. The places we could go, the sort of life. Everything that old done. Joe here. Next day, Miss Judith, say Joe steal. Or spare me. That yesterday. Me come here. Well, Joe didn't just say anything to Harry about what you heard? Him believe Joe steal. Him not believe Joe tell truth. Me come here. Get ready. Go Dawson. Find you. You and I are heading for the castle right now. King watched the sergeant and Joe put on their parkas and pick up snowshoes. He struggled to his feet and asked for permission to go with them wherever they might be heading. But the sergeant said no. Up tonight, boy. You'd better stay here. King watched the sergeant and Joe leave. The Indian flipped the latch string through the hole so the door could be opened from the outside. The door closed. There was no sound from the team outside. The sergeant and Joe must be going to travel on foot. The puppy frisked around King, inviting him to play. But King settled back on his blanket, watching the door. The puppy finally became tired, cuddled close to him, and went to sleep. Fifteen minutes passed, and then King suddenly raised his head. An instant later, he jumped to his feet, his hurts forgotten. He trotted to the door. King understood latch strings. He took the string in his mouth and pulled. The latch lifted. The door was blown open. King started into the wood, forcing his aching muscles to obey him. Strangely enough, he didn't take the route the sergeant had taken. He headed away from the trail. His nose was directing him. It wasn't until five minutes later that he saw the boy struggling through the snow toward him. You're too. Oh, 
Sergeant. I've been trying to find Joe's cab and I've lost the trail. I want to see Whitey, please. Take me to the Sergeant. He'll find the cabin for me. Oh, oh. Small mittened hand took hold of King's harness and the great dog started off. Not in the direction of the cabin. He had been told to find the Sergeant. And that's what he intended to do. Oh, oh, oh. Harry Harper was lying on his bed, unconscious. Judith and Max stood over him. You better drag him onto the floor. Make it look as if he were trying to get out of the room. Yeah, give me a hand. All right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There. Uh, where do we start the fire? Directly below in the kitchen. That makes sense. An overheated stove is a good explanation. Judith. Oh, yes, Phil. Well, did you take care of the boy? No. He isn't in his room. We'll find him. He isn't anywhere in the house. I've looked. We can't go through with it. We must. What's the good? If the boy lives... We've got to go through with it. Harry woke up and saw Judith and me just before I slugged him. But Tad's run away. He's gone after Joe. We'll take care of him later. Come on downstairs. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. did it! A home run way out of the left field stands, and the home team wins the game! Are you kids there? Are you seeing the exciting homers that your home team makes and cheering them on? Come out to the ball game now as guest of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right inside packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat, Quaker Puffed Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, Quaker Paco 10, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see a wonderful major or minor league baseball game free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry, get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker Puffed Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. If your store doesn't have the special packages yet, just send a box top from the regular package of Quaker Ready to Eat Cereal. Send to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Don't wait and miss exciting games. Act now. <laughs> Now to continue. Before the sergeant and Joe reached the top of the ridge, they could smell smoke. And when they were out of the trees and could see the castle, clouds of it were pouring from the lower windows. There were three people standing in front of the house, a number of men struggling up the slope toward them. That's Miss Judith. And Phil and the man they call Mac with her. No sign of Harry or the boy. No. They've done it. Cold-blooded killers. Judith, here comes Joe. That sergeant's Preston with him. Yes, where's Harry? We don't know. We're afraid he's still in his bedroom. We couldn't reach the smoke was too thick. And the boy? He wasn't in his room. We don't know where he is. Without another word, the sergeant took off his snowshoes and ran up the steps of the flaming house. Joe followed close behind. Oh, wait till they killed. You think the sergeant suspects? He'll do more than suspect if he ever gets Harry out of there alive. Oh, he can't. We can't take a chance on it. Get in there after him. What for? Yes, yeah, she's right. They reach Harry. They save him. There'll be a noose around our necks. What, you and Judith? You never mind that. Stop them. How? We'll wait for them at the bottom of the stairs. If they start down with Harry, I'll stop them with a gun. I won't have any part oh, of it. Go on, Matt. The men are almost here. I'll stop them. Mr. Harper, everybody out? Where's Harry? Where's Ted? Well, we're afraid that Harry's trapped in his bedroom. There are men. Oh, uh, no, no. There's no need for the rest of you risking your lives. Sergeant Preston and Joe Taggart and Mr. McCarthy have gone in already. Uh, can't you men do anything to save the house? Well, there isn't a chance. What about the boy? Hey, there's somebody <laughs> coming out of the woods. It's a boy and a dog. Oh, Why, it's Tad. That's King with him. Now, come on, boy. The sergeant and Joe had fought their way through the smoke-filled <laughs> corridor on the second floor of the house until they reached Harry's bedroom. There he is. Joe, help you. Oh, I'd take his feet, Joe. Yeah. Look, we're down back stairs. That's on fire. We'll have to use the front. This way. The two men stumbled toward the stairs with their unconscious burden. They started down, choking and gasping for breath. They finally reached the bottom, and ahead of them was the open door. Only a few steps more, and they'll be safe. And then... That's far enough. What? Dropping. Get back up those stairs. Got a gun they intend to shoot. Then you'd better start for coming through that door. The sergeant stumbled on through the billowing smoke straight toward the level gun. Oh, 
Just as Mac was about to squeeze the trigger, King hit him from behind and knocked him down. The bullet went into the floor. Mac still clutched the gun, but King's jaws closed on his gun hand and twisted it until the gun fell from his grasp. Sergeant Joe carried Harry past the struggling pair and into the open. Here, take him. When Harry had been handed to the waiting man, the sergeant ran back into the house where King was still standing guard over Mac. Get me out of here. That's enough, King. All right, Mac, on your feet. You're getting out of here and you're headed straight for jail. Move. All right, all right. Get away from me. It was not until the next day that Harry Harper regained consciousness and agreed that his brother, Judith, and Mac must pay the penalty for their attempted murder. Before the sergeant started for Dawson with his prisoners, Harry shook his hand. Thanks for saving my life, sergeant. It's going to be a lot different from now on. Oh? How do you mean? Well, I'm going to forget about gold and start thinking about my son. We'll live in a home instead of a castle. Why do you live with us? Yes, Ted. Is it Joe? Of course. It'll be your home. And I want you to be happy there. Oh, you bet. I'm sure of that, Ted. And with that settled, I think this case is closed. <laughs> we'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Young America keeps its musical knowledge up to date by listening to Phonorama Time, starring Johnny Desmond. Every Saturday, Johnny presents a roundup of the platters that are making musical history from coast to coast. In addition, he brings such outstanding big-name guests as Teresa Brewer, the Fontaine Sisters, and Bill Haley's Comet. Guest disc jockeys from every section of the country appear regularly to report to listeners on the top tunes in each of their hometown areas. And interesting teenagers appear on Phonorama Time to bring their viewpoints on what young America is thinking about and talking about in music and other fields as well. Everyone loves Johnny Desmond, and everyone loves his Phonorama Time show. So gather your friends and fellow music fans around this Saturday and every Saturday for the musical session you can't afford to miss. Phonorama Time, starring Johnny Desmond on Mutual over most of these stations. Two desperate men are planning to rob Omar Wiggins' general store. It looks as though Sergeant Preston will be too late to stop them. And if he tries to trail them, they're certain to put up a deadly gunfight to avoid capture. Don't miss this exciting adventure, Friday. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company. Makers of Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.